The Leafs with a dominant win over the Flyers. What do we learn? What does it mean? We'll break it all down on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. What's going on, buddy? Happy about last night's victory? Uh, of course. I said I was hoping for a happy day and being a, excited about watching a Leafs game. That was an exciting Leafs game to watch, for sure. Oh, yeah. It's Victory Friday here on Locked On Leafs, so we're in good spirits. We'll go through our three stars of the game. Break things down. You got, uh, you know, Leafs and Hurricanes tomorrow night as well. So we'll definitely touch on that. Reminder, it's the St. Patrick's Day game. So if you're going down, got to wear some green. And uh, there's this weird story out of Pittsburgh I want to get into with these stolen bobbleheads. It's really, really bizarre. But we'll get to that all in just a little bit. But let's start uh, breaking down last night's 6-2 win Over the Flyers, a fairly convincing victory. Uh, I thought that the Maple Leafs got off to a really good start. The second period was probably, you know, quite even. And then they really ran away with it. They scored three goals within a four minute uh, and 15 second span in the third period. And they really, really sealed the deal. It was curtains after that. Uh, What did you make of the Maple Leafs last night? Yeah, I thought they were dominant. I thought this is this is the Leafs team we're kind of expecting to see. The response, you know, coming off a break, I want. I, I was hoping that they wouldn't be rusty. I hope they were going to be more assertive in their game, and we definitely saw that. And even, yeah, like a lot of people, I'm sure, were not exactly comfortable with that 3-1 lead because the Flyers were, were pushing back, right? Yep. Uh, and so I think they did the thing that they're supposed to do when they have a 3-1 lead, which is don't take, your foot, yeah, don't take your foot off the gas. This is not a team that can sit on a lead. You have to push the issue right so you score two goals within eight seconds all of a sudden now i think a lot of people were breathing a lot easy when they saw that 5-1 you know 5-1 lead and then obviously finishing off 6-2 but that's that's how this team has to play that's how this team has to play those situations they can't be sitting back they got to be assertive they got to keep it going for 60 minutes and that was a perfect example of that yeah, the discrepancy in high danger chances at five on five was yeah. quite large. Nineteen to two, the Maple Leafs out chanced, uh, out high danger chance the Philadelphia Flyers. It wasn't a a busy night for Ilya Samsonov, but ends up making twenty six saves on the night. Thought he had a couple of big stops. That that he had a massive save in the first period on Hathaway in the breakaway. It was only one nothing at the time and. You know, if if he allows that goal on Hathaway, who knows what ends up happening in this game. So that Samsonov, uh, you know, did his job last night and probably inched himself just a a little bit closer to earning that starting job come game one, you think? I think so. I mean, that to me, that's that's a game that you say, all right, that's that's the game one starter there. Right. A good Flyers team was not an easy game. Like, yeah, he didn't face a lot of high danger chances, but. He still had to make some important saves, especially yeah, busy. he was busy, right? And he looked, you know, he made those that extra effort on a few of those saves too. And so, yeah, that's that's an important uh, important game there for Samsonov. Um, what did you make of the new lineup? And and I guess we didn't really get a, a full look at it because Callie Yarncroft did get hurt in this game mm-hmm. and. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like he's going to be out a while, according to Coach Sheldon Keefe. But Tyler Bertuzzi and Austin Matthews, there's a spotlight on those two in particular going into the game because it didn't work earlier in the year. It didn't look great on Saturday night against the Montreal Canadiens. But I thought those two were exceptional tonight against the Flyers. It's clear that Sheldon Keefe sees something. In that duel, in that, well, obviously be in that trio once Marner is back. Mm-hmm. And so I think the big thing here is where we're, you know, the reason why those high danger chances were so high, they accounted for a lot of them, especially, um, you know, early on. 
no, Tyler Bertuzzi gets screwed off a goal. I didn't. Yeah, I, I get that wow. the spirit of the rule, but like that was like the most chintzy hand pass I have ever seen. Considering Austin Matthews got why Austin Matthews was on the ground like that. No, just a casual hit from behind into the boards. Yeah. You know. nah, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yeah. gripe about that. It is what it is. But it was a beautiful, like, but Tyler Bertuzzi, like, he, dude, is he, like, this is, we've been talking about this for a while. Th- seeing how, what he has done. And I, I what I give props for Sheldon Keefe is he's giving him the opportunity, right? Because earlier in the year, I thought maybe this relationship was like done with between Keefe and Bertuzzi. Seems like now it's kind of reversed its course. And I think Keefe is putting a lot of trust in Bertuzzi and saying, all right, all right, let's give you some time with the big boys here. And that chemistry is really starting to become apparent. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Like, I think you, for sure, both parties deserve a lot of credit. Um, but like th- this guy was brought in and he's coming as advertised now, right? Like now it looks like he's comfortable with his teammates, with the systems, with this team. And he's doing a lot of the things that he, we expected him to do right out of the gate. Took him a while to get here. But even last night, if you listen to what, you know, uh, Austin Matthews was saying post game, you know, he's like, you guys just, he's just like a little sticky bandit around the net, just always comes away with pucks. And he's always knows exactly where to go, goes to the net, stick on the ice, does all the, the, the right things. And, that's going to be very beneficial come playoff time. Let me tell you. And, and this is why he was brought in, right? Like this, we, we all know this and we've been saying this forever. And that's probably why Sheldon Keefe has given this guy such a long leash. It's just, all right, we got to just string him along, get him comfortable. But by playoffs, like the dude knows what to do. There's a reason why he scored seven goals in the playoffs last year in seven games for the Bruins. Like he just knows where to score come playoff time. And you look at the goal last night that he did score, right? Just, you know, go straight to the net, stick on the ice. Austin's a good passer. He knows where to put the puck and uh, just an easy little redirect tap in. Um, and, you know, th- there's a goal for your club, right? Start start the game off hot. So I think that uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, man, like he's he is a missing element that the Leafs have not had in quite some time. Uh, someone in the top six who can do things like that. I mean, Michael Bunting was okay at it. But he was a bit smaller and wasn't as sturdy in front of the net. Uh, I I think that Tyler Bertuzzi brings you that skill and brings you a little bit more finish when it comes to uh, to doing that. So I'm I'm excited to see what this guy can do for this team moving forward. Uh, if he can, you know, just go, you know, hound pucks and then get to the net and then let Matthews and Marner do their thing. Whether you're going to be a, a screen or you're there for a tip or a backdoor feed. You know, I think that he'll be ready for the challenge. And uh, whenever Marner gets back on the team, he he, it's been diagnosed as a high ankle sprain, a mild high ankle sprain, but high ankle sprains are never good. Um, so however long he's out for, he's still considered day to day moving forward. So we'll see if he's in this game this weekend. I, I kind of doubt it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what that full trio can do. Once they're put together back, uh, back again. Um, okay. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into the three stars is kind of the, 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 the power play mess at the end of the game that had uh, the coach just on fire on the Philly side. Now we were robbed of John Tortorella going absolutely nails uh, after Sheldon Keefe, while up 6-1 throughout his top unit with like two minutes to go in the game on the power play. Um, Typically, you know, uh, respect, you you usually don't go with PP1. You throw out some other guys. But Sheldon Keefe came out and said like he had some tired guys in the bottom six that had just come off playing some shifts. Matthews had been sitting for a couple of shifts, so he needed to get him out there. He This was more of him managing his own bench as opposed to sending a message to the other side. Um, but regardless, what, what did you make of the hoopla about, uh, you know, this whole PP1 mess at the end of the game? You know, if you don't want the other team to put their top power play unit out, maybe don't take penalties. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, fair. That's, that's one. Two, I mean... What you're, I, I was, I literally was about to like when it was happening, I was gonna put it in the Discord, 
what does the Flyers coach want to put Ryan Reeves out on the power play? And what does Sheldon Keefe do? He goes and he puts Ryan Reeves out on the power play. Like yeah, they get scored on. <laughs> and they get scored on. Like, what do you what, like? This is the National Hockey League, man. This isn't like, you know, little kids playing on the ice and the other team's up like 13 to 1 and is, is pouring it on and making the kids feel bad. The, on the what other what team. What they call that fair play where you gotta you gotta have everyone play the same amount of shifts yeah. and minutes is a fair play yeah something like that like i'm sorry here like i just don't understand how an nhl coach can go out and feel like his feelings are being like toronto's not sending out a message they're not that type of team like i i no i i just don't get why the flyers coach feels like he has to cry about it because literally he was crying like not cry literally crying but implied crying about it yes like, there's some strong complaining about it yeah. at the very least i yeah i mean i i feel the same way but what i will say is like if you're so upset about toronto trying to score another goal what are you doing trying to also score another goal like if the game's over and you want it to end 6-1 end it 6-1 like uh, the fact that you're out there trying to score a shorthanded goal yet you are upset that toronto's trying to score on the power play it makes no sense to me you know what i mean <laughs> Like the only time that Flyers team looked good was when they were shorthanded, because yeah. they were they're good team short. Like, yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. Why are you celebrating when you're down six two? You're down six two. You're getting your butt whooped. Yeah. Like I could, they could have easily have made that uh, that distinction as well. But the Leafs are bigger people about it. Uh, all right. On the other side, we'll go through our three stars of the game. And uh, this Yarmer Yager bobblehead story really took on a life of its own yesterday. We'll get to that and preview tomorrow's Leafs Hurricanes St. Patrick's Day game. That's all coming up next here on the Locked On Leafs podcast. Today's show is brought to you by Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Uh, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Uh, must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member of SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are your hosts here on the show. Uh, this is a daily Maple Leaf Central podcast. You can find us wherever, whichever platform you use to listen to your pods and also up on YouTube. Our road to 5K subscribers continue. We only need about, I think, 220 in that range uh, to get to 5K. And, and once we do, we're giving away a Leafs jersey. So make sure you subscribe to the show. Uh, leave us a little comment down below on YouTube as well. Let us know your thoughts on uh, last night's game between the Leafs and Flyers. Did it make you feel a little more comforting that the Leafs could play a game like that against a team that uh, all playoff caliber team is, is what the Flyers have turned out to be this year? Let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, three players in particular, though, that I was impressed with, Dave. Let's get to our three stars of the game. Why don't you start off with your third star? I'm going to go with the Lilligren Joel Edmondson pairing. I thought that was, I mean, for, like, if you could look at it through the stats, you can just even look at how they play it on the ice. I thought that pairing looked a lot more comfortable together. And that's a, that's a big development there because Timothy Lilligren has been in the spotlight quite a bit the last few weeks. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I had them as my second star, to be quite honest. Well, I had Lilligren as my second star, but you okay. can put the, the pairing as a whole there. But you look at Lilligren's game, I mean, a, a goal, an assist, uh, played almost 19 minutes last night, uh, team high 85% expected goals while out on the ice. And, you know, I, I 
watching the game, I guess I, I don't necessarily track, you know, how often guys are in D zone starts as opposed to O zone starts. But when I saw those numbers, I said, oh, okay, he must have been, they must have been sheltered a little bit with a lot of, you know, O zone face offs. Not the case. Not the case. Lilligren at five on five, seven of his 11 starts were in the defensive zone. So, you know, they did a really good job not allowing Philadelphia to do much of anything. Um, Lilligren on the ice for nine high danger chances for zero against. And the big word here is confidence. He was playing with confidence. And that was on full display when he jumped up into the rush and ripped that goal right over the blue line. That is what a confident Timothy Lilligren brings you. That's the Timothy Lilligren that the Maple Leafs kind of do need in this lineup. Someone who can provide a little bit of offense for the back end, uh, who can um, you know, start breakouts, and someone who can jump into the rush and maybe provide a little bit of offense. Uh, that's exactly what you want to see from him. And then just what was you know, played a simple game defensively as well. So uh, Timothy Lilligram, what he did last night, he needs to do every game moving forward, and he will uh, make sure that Sheldon Keefe has to keep him in the lineup come game one of the playoffs. So he was my second star. My third star was Samsonov. I gave Samsonov my third star last night. Um, I, I thought that he was great. You know, you hate that they were able to score that shorty late in the game, but ended up making 26 to 28 stops. I thought that he had a couple of big key saves. I, I mentioned it earlier, that one on the breakaway on on uh, on Garrett Hathaway. I mean, if he allows that goal, it was one nothing at the time for Toronto. He allows that. It's a 1-1 game. Who knows how things end up? in that game could have turned everything around. You give a little bit of momentum to the home team um, could have been a different outcome last night, but he shuts the door, makes that save and uh, made plenty more throughout the night. So I had Samsonov as my third star. Who was your second star? It was Samsonov. <laughs> so uh, I think again, they're starting that conversation about who should be the goaltender come game one. I think most of the most are putting Samsonov as that game on starter. And again, if this is the Samson of we're getting from now until the end of this, I mean, we've been getting it for a while. I'm not saying that all of a sudden Samson's playing like this, but if Ooh, this is the he, also, he also broke a record or he tied a Leafs record yeah. last night, seven straight road wins, which ties a Maple Leafs uh, franchise record. Exactly. Like he's, uh, it, it's, he's done a reverse of last season. Last season, he was so good at home. This season, he's so good on the road, which is, yeah. Interesting because guess where the Leafs are probably going to be playing in round one and round two on the road, Dave. Final answer. Yep, you are correct on that one, Mike. So yes. I think uh, this is this is an important like hostile environments. We've always people have always maybe also wondered can Samsung handle those hostile environments? I think there's not more hostile environment than Philadelphia other than Boston, in my opinion. And yeah. so these are important games for Samsonov to prove that he can handle the storm a little bit here. So good one for uh, Ilya last night. And uh, we probably had the same number one star last night as well, uh, because I think the best player on the ice was Tyler Bertuzzi. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, I was going to do like a Bertuzzi-Matthews duo, but I think Bertuzzi was the catalyst, which you would not normally say because right. Bertuzzi's usually the guy that needs someone else to kind of get him going a little bit here. But like you're, Matthews, for the fact that Austin Matthews would set up a guy for a goal, we've talked about a lot of times how Matthews has a crazy number of goals, but not many assists. And a little Cy Young action going on this year. Yeah. But also Matthews does like to pass it in high danger areas if a guy is available for those plays. Um yeah, I think Bertuzzi has earned this chance to be on the top line now, like when you see the way he's played. Now, do I prefer to have Matthew Nyes in the top six? Yes. Don't necessarily need to see Matthew Nyes in the, uh, on the top line. If Bertuzzi's going, I think Bertuzzi has the offensive upside that I think they want, and come playoff time, that could be a very dangerous trio, and then hopefully everything else trickles down, right? Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Like we we spoke on Bertuzzi in the prior segment, but you know the style of game that he gives you, it's exactly what you need, yeah. right? Especially come playoff time. So uh, for him to go out, you know, a couple points, goal, assist, shed another. Um, I, I thought that he was exceptional last night from start to finish. 
he was uh, aggressive and um, making plays. Yeah, Bertuzzi definitely uh, put himself in in the good books after a not so great start alongside Matthews on uh, on on Saturday night. So nice to see that kind of come to fruition, and hopefully Marner gets back uh, soon so we can see what this trio looks like together. Because uh, it, it's probably it, look game one of eighty two. That was the line that Sheldon Keefe wanted to get a look at, which means that's probably his preference also for game one of the playoffs, right? Yeah. Like usually your first your first instinct is usually the correct one. And his first instinct was to put Bertuzzi with Matthews and Marner. He's finally gone back to that. Uh, hopefully it can it, it can continue. But just the style and confidence that Bertuzzi is playing with now, um, definitely I think pairs well with those two. And it did last night with uh, with Austin Matthews. So those are your three stars of the game. On the other side, uh, we'll tee up Leafs and Hurricanes on the St. Patrick's Day game. And got to get to this weird story out in Pittsburgh. Yager bobblehead bandit on the loose. We'll tell you more about that next. Today's show is brought to you by Ibotta. Do you love making money, but also love spending money? Don't we all? Now you can make more money while you spend it every time when you shop with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps give you give you points that don't amount to much with Ibotta. Just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account paypal or gift cards join over 50 million users that earn cash back every time you shop from over 2700 brands and retailers including Lowe's, macy sephora best buy and more right now ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying ibotta by using the code lockdown nhl when you register just go to the app store or google play and download the free ibotta app to Start earning cash back and use code locked on NHL. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code locked on NHL. Welcome back into the Locked On Leaves podcast. It's Mike Stefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, there's a really strange story that uh, went, uh, went down in Pittsburgh yesterday. Uh, if you are unaware of what happened, uh, I don't know, you must be living under a rock or don't have Twitter. But essentially, um, the Pittsburgh Penguins were scheduled to have a Yager bobblehead giveaway night. Yager Yager was in the building for it. And, uh, well, lo and behold, uh, we see a Pittsburgh Penguins presser yesterday morning, press release, basically stating that... Um, there's not going to be a giveaway because the bobbleheads were stolen uh, en route to the arena. Someone had stolen the bobbleheads and uh, they're instead going to be just giving out vouchers to obtain a bobblehead on a later date. Uh, so that was kind of the, the beginning of the story. And that's just insanely hilarious to think that someone would steal like, I think it was like 17,000 bobbleheads something like that, 18,000 bobbleheads. Like, could you imagine? Like, I imagine that was not the intended target, probably trying to steal some other, you know, high-valued goods. And uh, then they open up this van, and lo and behold, it's a box of bobbleheads. I'm sure their heads were bobbling all over the place and about to explode when they realized it. But uh, it's just hilarious. And then Yarmer Yager comes out. They put out a video with him and he's in a van or he's in a truck. He has a little bobblehead next to him. He like puts it in the seat beside him, buckles him up and says, let's go find your friends, buddy. And then like rides off into the sunset. And then people started thinking, wait, is this a hoax? Is this actually not uh, uh, like, have they not been stolen? Was this all a ruse? And I, I, for half the day, I could not decide if this was real or if this was a hoax, I was on 1050 yesterday. Uh, I thought that it was real. My producer thought it was a hoax. Um, but ultimately, I do not believe any bobbleheads were given out at yesterday's game when all said and done. So it sounds like this story was actually real. So the the 
Yarmir Yager video is just bizarre that they would put that out anyways. But what a what a crazy kind of series of events for Pittsburgh yesterday. They went on to crush the Sharks, by the way, 6-3 in that game. Oh, good that they actually were able to get a win. Good for yeah. the Penguins. Um, yeah, I don't think this was a hoax at all because, first off, people know that it's a Yager bobblehead night and they're trying to get tickets to go. Like, I would probably want a Yager bobblehead if I was a Penguins fan, right? I'd get to yeah, just, but, just but like, go to the game for that. So that's why I don't I, think it's a hoax because that'd be a real cruel thing to all of a sudden take away that opportunity to get the bobblehead. Okay, hold on, Dave. Hold on, hold or, on, hold on. Am I misinterpreting what you got? What the guy was saying about it being a hoax? Maybe I, I think like they were always going to give the bobbleheads away. Okay. They were just putting on the story, and then like Yager was going to show up that night and say, "Oh, I found the bobbleheads. Here's a bobblehead for you. Here's a bobblehead for you. Yager's oh. the king. Yeah, like that's what they thought was happening. Oh, so they staged <laughs> this the, the this whole story of how they were stolen, and then Yager was going to show up." with the you know on the ice with a bunch of bobbleheads and then just start oh. handing them out to people that's what people thought was going to happen and that's why they thought that the stolen bobbleheads was a hoax not that they were never going to give okay. them away and it was a way to get out of a bobblehead no no no, like, no, no, no. no I, I didn't think no no i just don't th- i for me i thought maybe people thought that they were i don't know i think that's a little much <laughs> to try to do like I, I they don't need to do that, like in terms of making the ball has act like they were stolen and then Dude, Yager went out been, to find them. It would have been awesome if that was the case, though. If this turned out yeah. to be a hoax and then he shows up and he hands out these bobbleheads, the amount of press that this got last night was insane. Like, oh, yeah, every single radio show, sports talk radio show, not just hockey shows, but sports shows was talking about this and whether or not it was a hoax or not. People were tuned in to what was happening in Pittsburgh for a Penguins Sharks game with nothing on the line because they wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, it, are, are these bobbleheads going to show up? Like, is this real? Is this fake? It was kind of genius marketing if it was a hoax, but it did not turn out to be uh, as the bobbleheads I, never did show up. Obviously. I will say the best thing about this whole thing. I'm a big Sopranos fan. How mm. many Sopranos memes I have seen come out of this story it has been beautiful oh i know it's like christopher multisanti opens him opens it up and then just like bobbleheads fall out like that's yeah. what that's hey. what I, I kept picturing happening last night uncle Tony, i thought it was a bunch of armani suits it turns out to be a bunch of bobbleheads bunch of bobbleheads i swear uh, i swear it was armani bad intel yeah uh hilarious hilarious story i feel i mean i, I feel bad for those penguins fans i don't get those bobbleheads well, they will. They got a voucher, so then they'll yeah. Just, they'll eventually like, get them. They'll um, eventually get it. But yeah, like, I'm like, how now? Like, if you're the person that took the bobbleheads or got a hold of the shipment, I, you, wait, I mean, what, they do what now? If now they're probably not listening to this podcast, but if I was in that situ, if I was in that situation, I would just conveniently park this truck in front of the arena. And walk away. <laughs> Don't even have to say. Just park the truck. Walk away. Let and then let it, let it just end it that way. I think maybe that's what the penguins need to do. Just if you got the bobbleheads, just leave them at the arena. Don't say anything. We won't do anything. Just no, let us have the bobbleheads. No questions asked. Policy. <laughs> yeah. We just a no questions. No questions asked. Yeah. Just give us the bobbleheads, man. We want the bobbleheads. Yeah, uh, it's I don't know what the hell they're going to do with them. Um, yeah, you can't offload them because people are going to know. Right. Like that's what are you gonna, you can't sell 18,000 bobbleheads. Right. Yeah. So you can't go to a sports store saying, look what I got. Right. You're going to have to ship these off to China with like, you know, the the you know how when you win the Super Bowl, there's technically hats for both teams, mm-hmm. and then they ship those loser hats across the sea uh, to like some other developing third world country. And apparently, like, if you go out to China or you go to you know Africa and go to the, some of these countries, you can literally see like like you'll see like a Super Bowl champion 2023 for the San Francisco 49ers hats. They yeah. exist. The shirts exist, right? They 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 destroy some, but they also send some away. Um, maybe they'll do the same with these bobbleheads. They'll just like send them out across the sea, out to China or something, um, probably back where they came from, realistically. And uh, and then they'll just never see the light of day here in uh, 
here in 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 North America or in Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's mm-hmm. probably not a story that I'll be keeping an eye on, but it was uh it, it was a fun story to track, I suppose, for yeah. yesterday at the very least for a couple hours. Tomorrow, Leafs, Hurricanes, St. Patrick's Day game. Leafs will be rocking their uh, green and white jerseys in honor of the Toronto St. Pats. Uh, these are always really fun games between the Leafs and Hurricanes. And uh, I, it, it's unfortunate that Marner might not play because usually he's a catalyst whenever they play the Hurricanes. Like, he's a Canes killer, this guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, a mild high ankle sprain. There is no timeline, but he's technically day-to-day. They're not worried of it being a long-term thing. Um, but I wouldn't expect him in this game either. I don't know about you, Dave. Yeah, I don't think he's really been skating either, right? So I think you're probably going to see him out at least another week if until we may even see him on the ice, even yeah, practicing. Which is why I'm surprised they said day to day as opposed to week yeah. to week. But it's a high ankle sprain. This isn't like I like it depends on I guess the degree of the ankle sprain. Um, but yeah, these things don't. This he's not Patrick Mahomes where he's going to be able to try to play on a high ankle sprain. Yeah, like, no, especially in a. I mean, if this was a Stanley Cup final, hell yeah, he will. Just yeah. like you saw Leon Dreisaitl do a couple of years ago in the playoffs, mm-hmm. um, and still led the league in scoring, which is insane. Um, but yeah, we'll see when Marner returns. Uh, Yarncroc, we mentioned earlier, won't be in this game either. He's expected to be out uh, for a little while, according to Sheldon Keefe. Um, as for the goaltender. I would assume they go to Joseph Wall in this game. Uh, that'd be, that's an that's an interesting decision, like who they decide to go with. Be interesting if they give Samson off back to back starts. Um, I mean, the Leafs are going to have back to backs coming up, so it's not like Joseph Wall will be sitting too too long. Yeah, but he'll yeah. get two games this upcoming week, regardless. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But maybe yeah, maybe they keep a little bit of a rotation and. Um, I, was, I'd like to see Joseph Wall get some starts just to build him up a little bit for sure. Yeah. Keith was asked about it yesterday after the game. And, and basically well, he was asked about the decision as to why Samsonov got the nod. And, uh, you know, he, he said that he had liked the game that Samsonov had been playing. Um, he thought that he'd been in a good rhythm and wants to keep that going and didn't want to give him too much time off between starts. Uh, but did say that there's still going to be, you know, some sort of, uh, split down the stretch here so uh, it'll be interesting to see how you know they go about that split um what i will say is you know when you look at the opponents that both goalies have been playing wall has had the harder opponents and mm-hmm. samsonov hasn't been tested uh all that much i suppose over the course of his last few games so maybe you want to get samsonov a game against you know like a, a, a top tier playoff caliber team now they've got you know some tough games coming up this week so perhaps he gets one of those but that's the only thing i'm thinking about when i'm deciding who do i want to put in net i i wouldn't hate seeing samsov against like a playoff caliber team yeah. such as the the carolina hurricanes as opposed to you know last couple where it's been you know philly and and he got you know wins against arizona and you know what i mean so that's that's where my head's at when determining who, you know, maybe I would start if I were Sheldon Keefe. Uh, should be interesting. But uh, how do you think this game plays out, though? You think we see another high score in a fair, even without Marner? Yeah, I think there's a good chance of that. Like, the Hurricanes have been firing. Like, they came off a really impressive win over the um, over the Panthers. Shut out the Panthers, too. Like Dude, that's- dude Freddie Anderson's back. Freddie's winning games. They brought in uh, Gensel and Kuznetsov. Kuzi with two points last night. And they did the uh, the old bird, the yeah. Kuznetsov bird as their their surge. And they kind of mobbed him at center ice. I, I thought it was great. I mean, I really liked that deal. I, I thought that it was a good, uh, it was, you know, kind of high risk, I, I guess mm-hmm. you could say, because it is $3.9 million in cap that they're taking on. But it was high risk, high reward, and early on, the early returns have been really good for uh, for uh, Kuznetsov. Um, Jake Gensel also got a point too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Gensel, I wasn't worried about like that. Yeah, that I mean, clearly... he's just coming off an injury too, so I'm curious yeah. to see how yeah. long it's going to take him to get back to speed. But yeah, Kuznetsov, if they if Kuznetsov 
plays to what we know Kuznetsov can play, the potential he could play at. This is something that the Hurricanes have been missing, especially in the playoffs. Somebody that's got that track record of being a playoff performer. Watch out. (laughs) Watch out Metro Division, that's for sure. Metro and then... You know, whoever makes it out of the out of the Atlantic, I mean, it's it's going to be a tough, tough go. I mean, la- last night could have been a uh, like a, a, an Eastern final uh, precursor, right? Yeah. Florida and Florida and, and Carolina very well could be very well could be. Um, I don't know. I, I have a feeling that we could be in for a bit more of a low scoring game that, that I, I just got a, a, a funny feeling. You know, I, I think that both teams are going to they're aware of what each other can do. And I think that they'll be pretty methodical and reserved. Don't want to make that mistake. That uh, is, is going to be killer. Um, and, and I mean, whether it's Anderson or Kachetkov, man, the hurricanes always seem to get good goaltending too. So I think we might see a bit more of a, a lower scoring game. And not just that the hurricane structure. Like if you look at some like the last yeah. time they played the Probably Panthers, before. they shut them out one, nothing. Yeah. They lost one nothing to the Rangers. I think they beat. They lost to the Stars two one. They know against these elite teams or contending teams or playoff teams, however you want to label them, the Hurricanes come out wanting to dictate their game, their yeah. structure, and limit chances. And I think for Toronto, that's gonna be frustrating for them because they always struggle against teams like this, like the Hurricanes, the Bruins that want to limit your chances. And so that's yep. where I think Toronto has to show, can we finally beat a team and get some good, solid chances against a team that's going to try to stifle us? Well, the, the word that always gets used by the players when they talk about uh, being in those games is patience. They have to have patience and stick to their game, and eventually things will drop. So that's uh, that's I'm sure that's what they'll be preaching heading into that game. Uh, any final words before we take off for the weekend, Dave? No, oh, it's gonna be a fun weekend. I can't wait to see the St. Patty's Green. They've already kind of shown off some of the green with their in practice. I, I want to see how these jerseys look in game action. Did you see the photo of the reverse, the reverse jersey? Like it's basically like it's the jersey that they're currently wearing, but instead of like it's in reverse, so the white parts are green and the green parts yeah. are white it, it looked pretty sick actually it I, I did mind it. Uh, like for me i i do like the green dominant colors like i look back to the old st pat's uh jerseys that they wore in the early days like the matt sundin's uh, matt sundin days um it, it's a very very beautiful jersey um i'm surprised they never really like considered bringing like something like that back I, and I guess that's where the old design of like the Toronto St. Pat's and just the name. I just really like the clover leaf. I think that's if you want to get St. Pat's, you got to get that. That's yeah. what it looked like. Thanks. I was going to look for a photo. Like if you did that color scheme, but you just did the clover leaf instead of St. Pat's. Also, what was that? Or there's this one also. Yeah, so there's two different ones. So that one has a yeah. like a double stripe. And then yeah. that one was like the the. Oh, stripe. okay. I didn't even realize they were different. Um. I, I think if you do that color scheme, but then you get the logo, like the, the clover leaf, I think you're, you got a perfect jersey. See, the, why can't why can't the jersey designers just see what's out there on X and be like, yo, can we use? I guess maybe it's a it's copyright thing. Like we don't want to take someone's design and have to pay them to use it. Well, I doubt that. Uh, like that's a pretty basic design. Like yeah. it's very basic. So I, I doubt that would have been a problem. But uh, the sad part is, like these teams do spend thousands of dollars, uh, on, like on consulting firms and and design firms to come up with these, and uh, and they still get crapped on by the fan base, even though it's like legitimately thousands of dollars of research and uh into what they think is like the best looking jerseys but no i will say the my kind of my final thought on this is if you go back in the day if you go back and look at history of the same past jerseys Mm -hmm. that logo is what they used to use so everybody wondering why it's designed like that that's what the jerseys used to look like the same well, not even with the shamrock, it's just a third that circle and it says St. Pat's. That's a design, an old design. So 
they're bringing back they're bringing that back they're not trying something new here yeah yeah back to the roots back mm-hmm. to the roots back when you know they could win championships <laughs> <laughs> I assume the St. Pats won championships. There was like four teams at that point. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> won championships. Yeah, twenty five percent chance to win a title back in the day. Maybe they should just completely change back to the Toronto St. Pats. Be gone with the leaps. I know. Let's just go back to the Toronto Arenas, man. There you go. Let's go even further back. There you go. There you go. Go do whatever you got to do to find success. To give us a parade in this freaking city. Anyways, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On at Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms, including up on YouTube. You can follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morisuti. And follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. If you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the content, we'd ask that you uh, please leave a like if you watched on YouTube uh, and a comment down below your thoughts, the jerseys, your thoughts on the game last night. How do you think the Leafs and Canes game is going to turn out? Whatever you want, let us know down below. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Well, I might not be back. That's still up in the air. I'm going away next week, and I'm not sure how the internet's going to be, but I will try my best to be to be on the show during the week. But if not, Dave, I have full confidence that you will put on a spectacular show for the fans uh, of Locked On Leafs. Uh, until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.